All right, welcome everybody. Welcome to the Paranormal Highway Show. Today I had something that I just have to get out. And I, there's something I need to know. So I've been looking up this one guy through social media, and I have a certain opinion about him, but I wanted to see if Anthony of Identify S4 has the same feeling, or am I looking into too much of this? Or is there truth into what I'm saying? What I'm talking about is Jeremy Corbell. It seems like every UFO video I put on, somewhere in the video, is Jeremy Corbell. Somewhere. Could be in the middle, could be here, could be there. And then sometimes, once in a while, I like check the news channels just to see what, what's happening on the news, right? I check Fox, I check CNN, see what the flavor is. Every time on Fox News, every time there's a UFO story, Jeremy Corbell. All right, you heard the name Mr. Corbell there. You are name dropped. There he is. Let's bring in UFO documentary filmmaker Jeremy Corbell. This is your specialty. You've been working on this for years now. Thank you for being with us today on such a big day. This is for you. And can we say the UFO community? Absolutely, the UFO community, yeah. Okay, so what is the biggest revelation you think from today's hearings? First of all, UFOs are not a matter of belief. That's a data poor perspective, and this is a data rich environment. So if you look at it this way, every day human knowledge expands, and that's what we're seeing today. Today was this landmark moment. It was a moment a lot of people were, were asking for. And it was a moment a lot of people were asking for. Nice, clean beard. A handsome man, I admit, he's a handsome man. He's more handsome than me. It's like Jerry, Jerry Corbell is like everywhere. Like, who is this guy? I, mean, I follow UFOs, but I don't usually watch a lot of documentaries because it's always like these scientists, these apparently these high college graduates, which I'm a college graduate, but but these guys are the college graduates, which it means. You know, they take courses like quantum physics or whatever. And somehow that makes them magical to see UFOs more than maybe a guy like myself or Anthony. So I was looking this guy up. Like, who is this guy? So I was looking up Wikipedia. And I'm not here to say everything on Wikipedia is real. But I was looking up Wiki, uh, Wikipedia. Like, who is this guy? You know, I can see in early life he was... Uh, born 1977, uh, University of Santa Cruz. I've been to Santa Cruz a lot. The, the university is kind of a, um, I, I don't like to use the word, but it's more of a hippie type of kind of a college where people go to learn how to meditate and that kind of stuff, in which this guy taught at a college or school on yoga. So I apparently I'm correct on that. And I'm looking at this guy. Okay, he's a fine art career. He's a He's a filmmaker. Wow, he's a director, documentary. Oh, so he's an actor. Oh, he's he's an art person. He takes junk and builds beautiful art. Handsome man. Hmm. My name is Jeremy Corbell, but uh, my friends and enemies call me forename as a joke because my full name is Jeremy Kenyon Lockyer Corbell. <laughs> I got four names, right? I'm a investigative filmmaker, accidental artist, and uh, trying to be a former mixed martial athlete. So I'm looking at his career. Notable art exhibition, Death to Life. Corbell disassembled computers and embedded them into ventures, doors, and windows, and harvest through Los Angeles. Demolition. So he's a good man. He, 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 he takes junk and makes beautiful art out of it. And then, Factory Girl, Expedition Incarnation with pre-premiere of the Factory Girl 2006 film. So he's got a career in film. Life, love, and style of Sharon Tate. Okay, he worked on that film. Strange love and artistic calibration between Carbell and Katrina Bia held in historic downtown Los Angeles. Okay, whatever. A butter art existence. So this guy he's been through uh, parts of the world trying to re you know trying to discover himself. But of course, in all that part that I'm reading, there's nothing really about he had any kind of UFO experience. Nothing. I'm going down here. Film career. Uh, Las Vegas short. He made a short thing for Netflix, I guess Hulu, uh, Night of Rapture. 
immaculate deception, the subject of the Godfather, conspiracy, conspiracy. So he's got some conspiracy in his blood. So he knows how to make good conspiracy movies. Hmm. And then a noise interview, he alleged ex CIA operator who claims through military and intelligence covered has been exposed. So you can see that he's getting into now different kind of a documentary. He's getting into, wow, exposing conspiracy. Then, whoa, 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 whoa. Then I'm like, hunt for, then he did that go, hunt for skinwalker based on a book by George Knapp, Dr. Calm Keller. I don't know about you guys. I'm the, oh, look, look at this one. Bob Lazar, Area 51, focus. Bob Lazar. George Knapp was he's, his claim to fame, Eric. He's, I'm looking at this. He's been with frauds. Well, what? well. George Knapp took Jeremy Corbell under his wing. He introduced him to Bob Lazar. He did the Bob Lazar documentary, Bob Lazar, uh, Flying Saucers, Area 51. I mean, most of the documentary is running around in a barefoot. <laughs> you know, you're looking at his feet more than you're learning anything. Element 115 is a, a super heavy element. It's something that we only, only just recently synthesized. We only made four atoms of it. But um, the craft uses larger quantities of it, 223 gram little triangles of it. But it's a unique element. When it's exposed to radiation, it produces its own gravitational field, its own anti-gravitational field, and it's what's used to lift and propel the craft and create distortions around it. It's, a, it's an amazing material, and it's certainly nothing that occurs here or naturally. And it can be weaponized, and that's kind of the issue here. If this story is all true, that can be weaponized. Absolutely. But you see the guy all over the news now because he alleged that he's got all this military footage of UFOs. And for real ufologists, such as myself and Ron and you, uh, we know that they're drones. You know, the GoFast, the Gimbal, those are all drones they've been found to be drones so what footage did he really have ufo wise what? doesn't good that i know of. our satellites pick these up now head of uh i don't remember what he john ratcliffe he was the de deputy director of defense i think he talked about that he mentioned that so all these admissions from people now we're catching these on satellites we're catching these um so that's space in our in the in our airspace and then under sea as well a uso or whatever so when you say they're catching them under seas, uh, how uh, are they? Uh, optically or through our sensor systems under sea, we're able to track them and sonar. Is there any video of a thing? Nothing that's public yet that I know of. Is there any video of a thing? Nothing public yet that I know of. But common sense wise, and this is when I talk about common sense. I'm also I've been in the military. My whole family's been in the military and stuff. The military will only let you show information, if you're in the military or not, if they want you to. Right. If you're showing something they don't want you to, you ain't going to show it. They're going to stop it. I'm sorry. So it's either he's got some stuff that they don't mind him showing, they don't care, it's nothing, or it's completely, completely bogus. Because as soon as you show something that's supposed to be top secret, it's taken down. Well, not only that, uh, he was saying that uh, just as late as last week, uh, we were having dog fights with UFOs. Uh, our fighter pilots were having attempted shoot downs of unidentified uh, aerial phenomenon. Where is the proof of that? I haven't seen one news article on the United States shooting down UFOs or attempting to shoot down UFOs. I've seen none of that. See no footage where UFOs have engaged our pilots ever. You know, we've heard this all the way back from World War II with the Foo Fighters flying alongside our, 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 our uh, Air Force pilots and Navy pilots. Never heard of anything trying to get shot down. 
still to this day. So I don't know where he's getting that information from. It's because I should be obsolete. People like me, where military individuals come to me and have to leak me footage because they can't push it up through the chain of command and get it to where it needs to go. And additionally, the people where it needs to go, they also want it. Mm. So if I do my job right, I'll be out of a job because that line directly of information that should be healed, you know, that should be put back together so we can work as, as a single unit. Now, I want to show you this article. I'm, I'm not going to read the article, just the title of it. And I, I kind of chuckle at this. Um, we'll make it a little bigger. Beautiful expert, Jeremy Corbell. First of all, he's an expert. Listen, no such thing. I, I hate that freaking word expert. A lot of times, if you're hunting UFOs, Bigfoot, paranormal, it's luck. Being there at the right time in the right place. Yes, it is important to have the right equipment. Don't get me wrong. You know, there is certain things you could get better if you have the correct, correct equipment. But there is no one expert. Anybody's an expert. Technically, Anthony, if I open up my sliding door, open the door, looking up, Hey, actually, technically, I'm a UFO researcher because I'm looking up. Right. But there is no technically expert. It's being there at the right time, right place. Yes, you can have the better equipment, but it doesn't make you the expert. Now, in, in, in my eyes, in, Eric, this, in order to be an expert, you would have to have an actual unidentified flying object on your property where you can take it apart and study the ins and outs of it. Nobody's yeah. had the opportunity to do that. Therefore you can't get that title as expert. Yeah. Cause who approves? Yeah. Right. Who, who gives the approval stamp, yeah. right? right? Anthony, you've been approved. You are yeah. now the expert ufologist. Yeah. And reason I'm going to read the rest of this believes what? the new task force is the Pentagon trying to control UFO research. I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm reading this. This is the biggest load of crap I have ever heard. Listen, the only control that the Pentagon could do on UFO research is its own pilots in the, in the military that works mm -hmm. under them. They can't control Anthony. They can't control the majority of the UFO footages. Yes, they do come for some pilots, but that's a small percentage. Most of the UFO footages comes from people like yourself, myself, and people out there. The Pentagon can't control the people. They can only control what's in within the military itself. True. I mean, I hate to say it, but so what? So if this Pentagon is real. And say Anthony caught the real thing. Land in his backyard. So is this Pentagon going to go driving out to Anthony, put him in the prison and, and hide it and erase everything? I mean, I mean, I mean, what? How, you, you know what I mean? I, you know what I mean? I mean, it sounds silly. You can't control something that's worldwide. How do you control billions of people looking up, looking at that? I mean, I, I, I look at Corbell this way. If you were still in the Coast Guard and you filmed something on a Coast Guard cutter that you thought was a UFO and you send it to me, now I can make a title. I have top secret, you know, Coast Guard footage of a UFO over a Coast Guard cutter. Right? I could play with the title because you're in the Coast Guard. You filmed something you couldn't explain. You sent it to me. Now I have top secret footage, I'm calling it. How do we know it's actual top secret footage that was given to him? And it's true. No and the military is going to give top secret footage to a civilian. Oh, I know for a fact. I have been exposed to information. I know for a fact that the United States military knows a lot more about the UFO mystery, about these craft. And we are not seeing that in the report. But that's okay. Because this is now the change where we can begin to talk about it and acknowledge it. Oh, I know for a fact. I have been exposed to information. I know for a fact. And technically, I want people to understand this. Not just the Coast Guard or Navy or whatever. If you see something that you can't explain, it has to be reported in the proper chain of command. It has to be reported. You have to write it down in a report. If you skip that process, you skip that. You send it to a civilian. You could be dis you could get a disability discharge. A disability oh, discharge. Yeah. That means yeah. all say somebody's been in there for 10 years, 20 years, 10 years, 20 years. Now 20 years you get a, a pension. You think somebody's gonna risk their pension 
All those years are in there. And think about it. When you get out of the military, you know, you could go to the VA hospital. You're part of that system. You get discharged. Dishonorable. A dishonorable discharge. Sorry for saying disability discharge. I, um, I have a disability with the military. Oh, right. so, so I mixed that up. I mixed that up. But a dishonor discharge, you lose everything. And I know people who got discharged for leaking stuff out. Nothing major. Nothing, nothing like, oh, my God. Because you cannot. It's the chain of command. Has it been done? Well, I'm sure. But I'm sure those people are also not in the military either. Part of joining the military is what happens in the military stays in the military. It's a fact. So, and, and how does he know this task force? Does he get special passes to go on base, to, to hang out with this special group, this special NAS group? You know, and one of the things that drove me crazy. Anthony, I want you to hear this. So I was watching this UFO documentary show. I'm not going to say the name of the channel. I don't want to, you know, but in the middle of it, we're going to talk to an expert. It was Jerry Carbell. And he's talking about, yes, all my, my, my UFO expert friends researched it there. And they saw these three and four lights here. And they saw it in this spot. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, if his friends are experts, I'm sure if Anthony and, um, if he's out researching with Ron or myself or going to this spot in Utah, he's going to have his cameras. He's going to have his stuff. Yeah. Now, these guys got the money. Now, first of all, Jerry Cabell was born with uh, a silver spoon in his mouth, so he was able to do whatever he wanted in his life. I'm not saying to not trust him because of that. So they have the best equipment. So why is it they all have these friends, they all said these things, and these are all wealthy people. Where's all their equipment? Where's all their cameras? I mean, you have cameras. I'm sure their cameras triple better than your camera. No offense. They, you know, they're millionaires. Yeah. So well, he's just filming. Everybody always has friends that seen all this, but they don't have anything to back it up. But Eric, listen, Jim Goodall, really good friend of mine. If I had access to Bob Lazar, I could make a documentary too. If I had access to half the people that he ended up getting access to from George Knapp, I could have made all these documentaries too and become famous. It's all about who you know and what access you have. Absolutely. Th those videos you were showing were the videos I obtained and released, military film, Pentagon confirmed, UFO videos. Do not be four cents short of a nickel. UFOs are real and everyday human knowledge about UFOs and what they represent to humanity, it expands. What was once science fiction is now science fact. That's what seems to make you in the field today. Not not your credibility of how good an investigator you are. Not how many cases you go on. Not how much research you do. But who you know. Who could pick up the phone and say, hey, I got a guy that could go on CNN today for you. And, and he could talk the talk. That's how it works. It's sad. I mean, I, and, 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 you know, you can have arguments with people all day. One guy on Reddit goes, you know, this guy's a college. This guy has a college degree. I'm like, whoa, 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 hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. I have a college degree. So what? His college degree makes him better than myself. What? So so if if Anthony saw a UFO and he if say Anthony doesn't have a college degree, that discredits him. Mm -hmm. I hate when people say, "Well, he's got the schooling. He's got this." Big deal. Listen, I, a you, UFO, you and I are trained observers. <laughs> But you the thing is, I. Anthony, if you're, if, 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 if you and I are aliens, hmm. we're, we're, we're aliens, we're, we're flying to another planet. We're going to investigate the planet. First of all, you think we know which these people are trained in something or who's, uh, oh, that guy's the expert. Let's, let's fly over his head versus that guy over there. <laughs> like, like if, if we're being visited by outer space, they don't care about, your college degree, if you're in the military, police, fireman, a librarian, a mechanic, they don't care. And the only reason I'm bringing this up, people, is is I hate when I hear the word expert thrown out. I just want everybody to know this, that you can all, if you wanted to, you can all be researchers. You can all be. It's nice to have the better equipment. Don't get me wrong. It is. It is nice. But you do have most everybody has the number one equipment already on them. You have your phone, and these phones 
Some of these phones, some of these cameras on these phones are better than a lot of these lower cameras you could buy in the first place. So you got the you got the equipment to start. So don't ever let the word experts and people like Jericho Bell, the handsome, you know, the shade going off Fox News. We'll ever let them feel like you can't do something. You can you know be a research. You know what he's an expert of? He, I know for a fact he's a jujitsu expert. He's, he's a, a martial, martial artist. Expert. I know that. Yes, he I is. know he's a fashion designer. He's probably an expert when it comes to that. Yeah, so I was a mixed martial athlete. Yeah, I trained jujitsu my whole life. That's all I thought I would ever do. It was in my blood. Live, die, breathe jujitsu. And, um, you know, plans have a way of changing. And so uh, at one time in my life, I had a, a dramatic shift and I moved into, you know, fine art and photography. And I had a mentor who took me in and kind of showed me how to use like an old Polaroid. And so my art career just kind of, you know, took off from there. And but that's why he looks good. When it <laughs> I didn't say to, it. When it comes to, you know, UFOs and advanced technologies and, and stuff from other worlds, off world craft and stuff of that nature. He's not an expert, but I think he's probably at this point in his life, he's probably well read in to a lot of these things. He's made a lot of uh, friends in the military, a lot of famous people like George Knapp. He sits with and has the opportunity to talk. He's had the opportunity to sit and become friends with uh, um, Bob Lazar and, and many others. So he's heard uh, all this information. He's had you know the opportunity to sit down and get all this information and, and pour over it. Uh, and and talk with all these people but as far as labeling it as an expert that bothers me. he's not an expert he does. sorry he's not you know no, like, no offense to the people he knows it's great to have certain kind of connection but knowing all those people are not going to make an, an alien ufo ship fly right in front of you just because you know these people right and i'm glad that he's got people talking about the ufo subject i'm glad to see that I'm glad that, you know, the question's getting out there more and, and regular people that never even thought about UFOs are now thinking about them. But to make him the messiah of ufology, that's, you that's, make it a big mistake. That's like that. exactly what I'm talking about. It wasn't a person who's been a UFO lover since he's a kid. He's been a, a martial artist. He traveled through India not looking for UFOs to find himself. For yoga, meditation had nothing to do with his going around the world for UFOs. This all suddenly he starts to do a video on conspiracy. He's like, huh, there's a taste for it. Oh, people want me to talk about it. Hey, that, and that's where we're learning a lot even more lately, Anthony, that this is where the exaggeration starts to come in. Cameras, more cameras are on you. Hey, whoa, I can make more money over here than, than building art for here. You know, Fox, I, Fox, a vault news channels, Fox news. That's the channel you choose. The one, you know, that they're so one sided, you know, and not only that, why don't you talk to people that have actual experiences? Tom Reed, for example, that works with UFO man. He had an actual encounter where he was taken. The governor deemed that story true. He took a, a polygraph test. 99.9% .9 accurate. That guy's more of an ex uh, Tom Reed's more of an expert in the yeah. field. Me, I had an experience where I lost five hours missing time. Been studying it since I'm 13 years old. I, I, I would even consider myself because I had firsthand experience with oh, these things. Those grow that are beard. Talking to me. Grow that beard. Start doing yoga. <laughs> uh, start doing art. And then, and then, and then you could be the next Jeremy Carbell. But guys, I want to thank Anthony because this was bugging me and I just wanted to get this off my I chest, but I wanted to share it with the people in the community. I love you guys. I, if I feel something that I want to talk about, I want to share it. This is not about doing a live show, getting people's opinions. This is about just myself, what I feel. I wanted to see what um, Anthony, um, what he thinks about it. And that makes me feel better that, he does see what I'm seeing. And I don't, you know, we oh, don't right talk there. about behind the scenes. We don't talk about Jeremy Corbell at all. No. And this is like a fresh raw. So you help me out, my friend. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Happy to help. I'm, I'm just, I'm just as frustrated as you are that it's always the, the same one face that 
they made the face of you follow. Exactly. There's so many people out there that are just as well versed in exactly. the subject. It's not even more better well versed. In, in exactly. It. Exactly. Like I said, it all started because I wanted to check out some more UFO documentaries. It was going good until, oh God, here's Jeremy Carbell. <laughs> but beyond that, guys, I'm so down. I don't want to see Jeremy Carbell's face anymore. I'll check you guys later. UFO mystery. Okay, well, you've certainly done your job well because you have a lot of people who follow you. So tell uh, well, our viewers why they should follow you on Twitter and Instagram. Well, th actually, that's where I have dropped all of the new UFO footage. When I obtain it, I vet it. I make sure it's not a problem national security. I drop it on my Instagram and my Twitter. So I would follow it because that is the way you're going to see it first. And, and it's